Hello world, this is Craig. This is a 8010B that I recently purchased and uh, I wanted to talk a bit about what to look for when you're buying a board and why I happened to purchase this board and maybe you didn't buy some others. So one of the first things I look for when I'm buying a board is if it's been modified. And this board doesn't have any modifications on it. Uh, modifications are a bit of a problem in that they're probably not documented. You may have not have any idea why it was being modification. And so the first thing that I do when I get a board that was modified is undo the modification. The problem is that in either doing it or undoing it, there may have been some damage to the board. Uh, quite likely, if they were doing modifications, they may have cut some traces and they may have soldered in places that uh, are difficult to desolder or uh, it's been worked and reworked enough that the trace is starting to lift off. So I, I try to avoid boards that have been modified. Another thing that I look for on a, on a board like this is to see if the chips have been installed correctly. If you see where a chip is upside down or it's uh, missing, uh, it's off by a pin or maybe a pin is sticking out. And these are things that you can usually see in the photograph of the board. Uh, but if, if a chip has been put back in incorrectly, it probably means there was something wrong with the board to begin with. So somebody dinked with it and worked on it, took some chips out, and uh, then just in a rush put some chips back in. Uh, this board has no corrosion on it, so it was stored nicely, at least in a dry environment. It doesn't have any hot spots. Sometimes you can see, have a hot spot around a, a transistor driver or a chip, and that's where uh, uh, obviously a, a chip got hot and burned out. Maybe something was shorted out and uh, uh, it was overdriving. Also, there are, uh, you can have hot spots where a capacitor, uh, uh, electrolytic or, or tantalum capacitor, uh, uh, blew its juice and left a, a little burn mark on the board. This doesn't have any of those. Uh, the board has not been severely poached. Uh, this is one of my pet peeves. Or when people come in and, and poach the valuable chips off a board, even if they're not that valuable, you know, uh, for one or two dollar chip, they'll poach it and make a, a board unusable. And on this particular board, really the only chip that I wouldn't buy it if it was missing is this uh, this prom. This prom is the address decoder. It's a 1K by 4 and you can buy a new prom and download the, the code into it uh, but uh, I don't happen to have any of these proms and it would just be one more headache that I, I, I don't need. So if it's missing this chip, so this is the U54, if it's missing that chip I, uh, I'll just look on uh, for the next board or I'll tell the, the, the seller that, hey, it's got to have this chip uh, and I'm going to price it, my offer, accordingly. Uh, I don't really remember what this seller said the condition of this board was, uh, but uh, we'll come back to eBay conditions uh, a little later. Fingers all look good. Uh, we're not going to give this a real workout uh, in the card cage, but all the fingers on this look good, both front and back. And uh, other, those are the, those are probably the highlights of what I look for in uh, in a board. The front and back. If we look at the back of this, it looks pristine. It's factory fresh. Okay, so what am I willing to accept in terms of missing chips in, and thinking that it's still a fair price for the board? So we've got to know what chips are supposed to be on this board and generally what the chips do and which ones are hard to come by. So first of all, what the chips are doing on this board. Everything that is in this top uh, portion of the board has to do with the parallel I.O. These are the two 8255s. These are the I.O. chips themselves that are talking with the processor. These guys come out to these sockets and uh, some of these wire wrap pins. And the idea is that depending on how you're using this I.O., you will want to have different types of uh, either drivers or just shorting blocks or uh, resistor packs in these uh, sockets. So for example, this board came from the factory with this bus transceiver in uh, this socket. So this is a... Uh, uh, bi-directional bus transceiver. You can have the 8255 
say whether this is going, whether it's a write or a read uh, cycle, and this is a, a, a bus transceiver. All of these others generally come empty. And so don't be surprised if these are empty on your board, uh, but most likely they just have these in here. They didn't, they're not worth taking out. So we have three things in here. This is just a shorting, a sh shorting block. So you can see they just have little wire wrap pins that are connecting the finger directly to the 8255. So that's what these are. They're just shorting uh, the straight out from the 8255 to the finger. And I don't know if they were using this as an input or an output. But these are fine. And the uh, uh, nice thing about these particular ones is you can reuse them and short it the way you want to have it done. Uh, these are empty, of course, not a big deal. This is a, uh, a 7430 something. I can't quite read it. Uh, this is a, a output driver. So in this case, they were using uh, this chip as an output and driving the, uh, the output. These two, the SBC901s, are uh, the SBC, the single board computer, uh, the 901. I think they made a 901 and a 902 or 903. These are for the input. And so they're either terminating or they're voltage divider inputs. So these are just little resistor packs. Uh, convenient to have if you're doing an input. But again, if all of these are empty, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. OK, some boards may have problems with the RS-232 driver, or uh, for, for some reason, they may have been removed or not installed. These are the 1488 and 1489. These are easy to come by. Don't worry about those. These four are for the ROMs. Uh, whatever code this has in it, you're not going to be using anyway. So it's not a big deal if these chips are missing. Uh, 2732As are dirt cheap nowadays. Uh, so you can, you can replace these very inexpensively. The 8080, occasionally people will poach this. Uh, it's not worth that much, but uh, uh, unless it happened to be like a white ceramic one. But just this plastic package, the P8080A, is not that valuable. So uh, even if it's missing that, it's easy to come by. The RAM, uh, these are 1K by 4s. So it actually takes two chips to operate. And the way that the RAM is populated, uh, the factory default was to have 37 and 41 populated. This is the first K. And this is going to be the highest. Uh, they populated from the top down. And so uh, uh, 37 and 41 need to be populated. And then the next K down are those pair, and then these pair, and these pair. So obviously, this board would not work as is because it has the, uh, the high half. Or I'm sorry, it has the, the low half, but it's missing the high half of that top 1K. Uh, so uh, but these memory chips are they're fairly easy to come by. And so this isn't a big deal. This wasn't a showstopper to not have that memory chip in there. But obviously, if, if the user said that this was tested and running, uh, you have to take that with, uh, uh, well, it wasn't running, I guess, uh, is the point. It's, it's Without half that RAM, this, this board won't even boot up. These are just jumpers for what uh, how the ROM works and which ROM is used. So they can be missing. I don't think I've ever seen them missing, but... Uh, Nonetheless, there should only be one on this one, and this goes in either of these four locations uh, for what kind of a ROM chip you have. Uh, these are the bus transceivers. They can be a bit pricey uh, if, you, if you have to go out and buy them. Uh, they're usually not a problem if... Uh, I, I guess I haven't seen where these have been a problem. The, they're usually they're a pretty robust uh, chip. This is the bus controller. He's also a fairly robust chip, but I have had ba bad bus controllers before, and that can be a, a, uh, a pricey chip sometimes. Everything else on this, I think, is just a standard uh, 7400, uh, either 7400, straight 7400, a 7400 shot key, or a low power shot key, uh, or something that is an equivalent to a 7400. This is an Intel chip. Uh, in a ceramic package, but uh, there's a 7400 replacement for that. Okay, so I look at the board online. I look to see what's missing. And then one of the nice things about the Intel ISBCs is they're very well documented. And we can just go to the 
the manual for this and uh, look to see what these chips are and get the numbers from them. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here's the document for the ISBC 8010B hardware reference manual. And so for all of these boards, this is what we're looking for, the hardware reference manual. And these are readily available online. You can go to bitsavers.org and find uh, many, many of the uh, reference manuals, the hardware reference manuals for these ISBC family and the SBX family as well. Okay, so near the end, right before the schematics, there is a list of replaceable parts. Here we go. The service, so this is the service information chapter, chapter five, service information. Let's look at the replaceable parts. Okay, when you're looking through the replaceable parts, uh, we're just looking for big warning signs. The things that uh, might be hard to come by are the Intel chips, the 8287 is the bus transceivers I mentioned, that can be hard to come by. This 75, 188, and 189, that's the same as the MC 1488, 1489, easy to come by. 7400, easy to come by. 8255, easy. The USART, fairly easy. 7400 is no problem. The one shot. Uh, the 8224 can be several dollars if you need to buy that online. Okay, so all of these are uh, not a not a showstopper. Uh, 7400, the 8080, the 2114, uh, that's the RAM. Uh, 8097, I don't think I've had a problem getting those. The 8286, along with the 8287, can be a bit uh, pricey. This is the PROM, this is U54, this is the address decoder. So this is the pre-programmed Intel part number, and I've never seen, I mean, I've just never seen that for sale. People would probably just throw that away, and actually I don't even really look for uh, PROMs, unless I really gotta have a PROM. I'll have a search term in it. This is the, uh, it's a 3625A, so this is a, an unprogrammed PROM. You can go out and you can buy a 3625, if you can get the code to download, you can make your own. And uh, in fact, if, you, if in some cases on some boards, if you cannot find the prom, you can't get the prom and you don't have the code, uh, then you really kind of have to start with scratch and kludge together with a little ARM processor or something, a, a little state mach machine that simulates the prom. So as I mentioned earlier, this is what would be a showstopper for me, the, the U54, simply because I don't need the board that bad. Uh, the 7400s, again, easy, and all the rest of these are, are uh, just order by description and easy to come by, so don't worry. Okay, so those are the uh, kind of a review of the parts that you'll be looking for, and let's go back and take a look at the board. Okay, so how did this board make it to wherever it is, whatever marketplace you're looking at buying? There's a few of the boards that were actually, they'll be listed as new, and they are new. They were just never put into service. And then there's the largest group of boards that either removed for an upgrade of the system, or they were removed because they were dead. And I think that's where the biggest pool of boards comes from. There's a few boards that were take, taken out of service, uh, probably dead, and then poached. And so you'll find that there'll be lots of lots of chips missing on those poached boards. And then there's the boards that were just damaged. They, uh, I saw one the other day that there was a big, big area up in here that had been uh, damaged due to a, a little fire or something on that corner. So you gotta weigh your chances of this board actually running when it shows up. And that kind of leads me to the, the, the two things that I keep in mind when I'm buying a board and the first one is I have yet to buy a board from somebody that knew what they were selling and that's probably my fault in a part because I'm only looking for cheap boards I'm looking for uh, the boards that are not from a industrial controller supply house uh, because they'll sell this board for you know a thousand dollars when you can get it from somebody else that doesn't know what they're talking about for 50 bucks so I'm only in the market for the $50 boards. And as a result, when you uh, communicate with the seller, there's a, a very good chance that uh, he has no idea what he's talking about. 
So if they said that this board is tested, you know, keep in mind what they probably mean is that it was removed from a working system. Uh, so, but you know, like anything on, on eBay, when they say that it was, uh, that they're unable to test, what that really means is they tested it and it didn't work. If they say it was remanufactured, it probably just means they wiped it off. Uh, so whatever they say, take it with a grain of salt and expect that it's not going to work. And that's my second uh, rule is that uh, I, I do not expect the board to work when it first shows up. And in fact, I have never received a board that worked out of the box. Now, that's not to say that somebody said it was working and they were not telling the truth. Most likely it's not working because of a jumper setting or a, uh, uh, of course, obviously it's not going to be working out of the box if it doesn't have have a program. But uh, is either a jumper setting or there was some little thing that was tweaked on the board that simply made it so it was not going to work because it was not in the system that it was when originally removed from. We'll talk in the next video about actually getting a board, the first things I do, and bringing it up. So if you're going to run out and buy an ISBC 8010B, which obviously I encourage everybody to do, those are just some of the tips that I look for and the warning signs. Okay, that's it for this video. I will uh, post another one about uh, actually when you receive the board, get it up and going, and the likely areas that are going to keep this thing from firing up the first time that we apply power. Okay, thanks for watching, and I will talk with you later. Thanks. Bye.